All right, so the video that you are about to watch is supremely long for a clock radio. I certainly would never really do something quite this long for a clock radio, quite the production or anything like that, because it's not really worth my time, especially for something that really just isn't all of that, uh, isn't all that interesting like this. However, I mainly did this in response to the majority of my YouTube audience who feels the need to complain about the length of my videos. A while back, I received a, new, a number of complaints that my videos are too long, and admittedly, some of them really are a bit too long because I don't edit some of the stuff out. So I've been shortening, especially the clock radio videos, I've been shortening those down a little bit, I've been shortening the other videos, and tonight, I got a couple of complaints that uh, my videos are too short now. So, really, my message to YouTube at this point is, well, stop complaining. Because at this point, it's pretty obvious that I can't please anybody. Because I've tried to shorten the videos for all the people who want shorter videos, and then the people who want the longer videos complain. Uh, I, I do both styles because... Well, I tend to be a little bit of a long-winded individual. But there are some things that just don't need to have long videos. They can just be short, sweet, and concise. And this is certainly one of them, clock radios. I don't really think that there's much worth in making a theatrical production about something that is like a clock radio, unless it is truly something special, which, once again, this really isn't. Although it does have a couple of neat features, which you will see in the video. That being said, if you don't watch the whole thing because you don't like my longer videos, I am not going to shed a tear about it because nobody watches my videos anyways, and that's another thing that I sort of like to complain about. I know, complaining about people who complain is one thing, but I'm going to complain about, you know, the fact that I've got what? At current count, I've got 593 subscribers, almost 600, and yet... The highest number of views I have seen on a recent upload of mine, and I'm going to check and verify this, less than 50. So, less than half. In fact, if we do the math here, assuming I've got 600, less than 5 sixtieths of my viewer base is watching my videos. So, that's kind of interesting. I'm almost wondering why that is. You know, why you would subscribe to this channel and then just not bother to watch the videos. That being said, I've done that a few times. There are a few subscribers that I, up until recently, just really didn't, frankly, watch their videos. And I just unsubscribed from them. So I expect that after this video, there's going to be a massive unsubscribing, uh, unsubscribing thing. But that's okay, because I really only want to have the dedicated subscribers anyways. And, frankly, I think that... Although it's just a number, the lower the number, the better, because it means that there are fewer idiots around. That's another thing that I would really complain about a lot of the time, is the fact that there seem to be a lot of morons on YouTube. You know, the internet, the internet 12-year-olds who think that they know everything and really just frankly don't. And also, that like to point out the obvious on my videos, and also like to comment on my ancient videos that are four plus years old telling me how I should have done this better, should have done this better, should have... It's a four to six year old video. Get off my lawn. I'm not going to correct it because chances are I don't even own the video, I don't even own the thing that I made the video about anymore and I don't even care because a lot of those videos I don't care about anymore. I don't know what all I've uploaded on this YouTube channel there are what, like, almost 2,000 total videos that I have uploaded in the entire time I've been on YouTube. And I don't know what all of those are. For a while, you know, 2011 to 2013, I was uploading videos almost every freaking day. And that gets really hard to keep track of. So don't expect that I'm going to know what the F and H you are talking about if you leave a comment on an ancient video of mine. And two, don't get angry with me when I don't respond to your comment on an ancient video because I don't really care about any of the ancient videos anymore. They're garbage. I know that they're garbage and you don't need to tell me that. So, there you go. Anyways, now that I've spent all that time yakking on about that, let's move on to today's featured subject, shall we?
It is definitely no secret that I have got all manner of clock radios and regular clocks in all different shapes, sizes, finishes, and display colors. They're everywhere. But we're going to focus on a couple, uh, a subset of them today. This particular Sony Dream Machine, ICF C414. This is the only one of the bunch of these Sony Dream Machines that I actually bought new. I frankly feel a little depressed in the quality of it, considering it was brand new. I don't know what I just hit, but I hit something. Um, but it's uh, kind of a piece of junk for uh, the price that it would be brand new. But I mean, you can buy these at a thrift store for $4.99. It's certainly okay as a clock. Maybe not so much as a... The radio is okay, too, I guess. But I haven't really used the radio in a long time, so... I... Apparently it's tuned. Probably not for the right station, but... There you go, there's the radio, I guess. But the alarm is kind of a piece of crap. I don't really know about that one. But this one is available brand new over here. This is a Sony Dream Machine, and yeah, this is an ICFC one. Not sure if they. This is a Dream Machine, although I'm pretty sure the box said that it was in fact a Dream Machine. Again, kind of a piece of crap. Radio is not even really that great either. I forget how you turn the radio on. <laughs> I'm so smart, eh? Yeah, I'm an idiot. Buttons right there. Anyways, you can probably get the idea. It's not really all that great of a radio either. But here's another Sony unit over here. This is a Sony Dream Machine ICF C120. The radio on this one's okay. It's really cool. <laughs> Actually, you are. You just don't know. Black Friday is the fourth. Avoid accidentally spreading the flow to those you love. And uh, the alarm is actually a little bit different on that one as well. It sounds like a, a normal clock radio. And then I've got yet another Sony Dream Machine down here. I think this is another ICF C120. Oh no, this is a C160, sorry. It's a little bit fancier looking. It's got an, yet another alarm sound. Uh, and it's it's okay, but again, it could certainly be better than it is. But obviously for the price, can't really beat that. It's really cool looking. It's a nice pattern on the front there. There are many different ways to provide battery backup to clock radios. Most of these use one or more 9-volt batteries. And this particular Sony Dream Machine over here, the C120, as well as the C160, use a 9-volt battery. You could also have no battery backup at all. I've got clock radios that have got no battery backup, like that one up there. And then there's Sony's idea of long-lasting battery backup that they utilize in the C414 and this C1 and also many other models and that is a CR2032 battery. But did you know that there's another way to provide battery backup that Sony came up with? If you think that I've got some kind of a clock radio disease, well, you would be absolutely correct. But part of the problem is certainly the price of these things. Certainly hard to argue with that, and considering they're so plentiful, and a lot of them are just frankly really, really interesting for what they are, well, you really just can't pass it up. And so it was that I couldn't pass this up. I actually don't know what the model is. We're going to find out together on this video. Sony Dream Machine, model number ICF-C305, 
clock radio with a backlit LCD screen and it looks like some uh, radio station presets which is going to date feature as well and uh, seven buttons up here labeled one to seven tuning buttons for the radio radio controls enter band sleep timer and alarm check now if you're wondering where all the rest of the controls are well that's an interesting uh, thing to point out it turns out that this has actually got a really really neat feature you see it says slide and when you do that it reveals a whole bunch of hidden functionality alarm set modes date set mode date and clock set and alarm cancel not really sure what all of the features are, but we'll certainly learn those as we go along. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a listen to the radio. Looks like it's in AM mode. And you can see that these are definitely presets. I'm kind of picking something up there. Fox Sports Station, okay. These are not local, by the way. Somebody will be excited that I did that on the video. Hey, President Duterte talks New World Order. I'm Ed Baxter with Global News. Is U.S. soccer boss Jurgen Klinsmann about to be replaced? And the MVPs announced in Major League Baseball. I'm Dan Schwartzman. I'll have those stories and more coming up in Bloomberg Sports. That's all straight ahead. Bloomberg Station Bloomberg this is. Daybreak Asia on Bloomberg 1130 New York. Bloomberg 991 Washington, D.C. Ah, Bloomberg 1200 Boston. Bloomberg 960 San Francisco. That's really close, Station. But I don't believe anyone from that end up getting a pass. 
That's a local station. It's on 1200, so it's obviously bleeding through quite a bit. Seven-year-old Saskatchewan girl. Hundreds of mourners gathered in a town of Choiceland for the funeral of Naya Eastman. She was the subject of an Amber Alert a week ago. I know we've Police got uh, 1310. Not sure if that's daughter's what that body is. was The grade one was described. The girl yes, enjoyed it is. playing at pools and wearing Miss Saw. Yeah. Yep, that's it for the band there. Okay, let's change over to FM. It's as high as FM goes. Shops, no grocery store. Cars, trucks, SUVs, as far as you can see. Looking for a two for... Can't help you. But if you're shopping... Lots of bleed through. Public Ralph Goddard a déclaré que les autorités se penchent sur les d'aujourd'hui que les internautes. Can't get that station.
Tio pour vos enfants. Je me redis, ça. Party de bureau, son gardien, ça. They call that country music? I call that crap. And that is how you set a station preset. That's it for the uh, FM band. Turn the radio off. Got alarm check. So and we'll set the alarm here. So that's how you set it. Okay, well that's a, a pretty uh, interesting way to set that. I'm guessing that alarm B, no, it's the same thing, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I figured this thing would have had, uh, you know, single day alarms, but I guess maybe it does not. Well, anyways, I'll figure out the alarm and we'll have a listen to it. Sounds almost like disco. Use your alarm reset button. Oh, I think I figured out. Oh, I figured out the uh, the weekday alarm thing. You press alarm cancel, and then you can choose days. I guess you could turn them all off. That seems kind of weird. Hard to believe that it was that long ago, but uh, B Bishop PCM's World actually uploaded a video entitled You Can't Buy a Decent Alarm Clock These Days on April 4th, 2012, and wouldn't you believe it when it looks almost exactly the same. And I'm not sure if mine has got the, uh, the same feature that he was talking about in that video or the battery backup, uh, but like I mentioned, these... Some of these have got, I wonder why that camera's white balance is like that, but some of these have got uh, CR2032 coin cells, some of these have got 9-volt uh, batteries, and in fact, I've even got something else sitting over here, this American innovative thing over here has actually got two AAAs that it uses for a backup battery, but uh, this thing is different. Now, of course, the clock radio he has, or 
demonstrated in that video at least, is a Sony Dream Machine ICF C303, whereas this is a 305. And unfortunately, I have not been able to get the, uh, the time and date to actually stick. So we'll try it in this video. And we'll see what happens. I don't think it's going to work. I think it probably just has to sit around for a while in order for... Sit around, be plugged in for a while in order for this to work right. Okay, unplugged it. Plugged it back in, and it lost time. So that's not a, not a surprise at all. But uh, reportedly, what this actually has is a super capacitor. There's a little capacitor sitting underneath the display screen that... Uh, keeps the time and date intact. Simple as that. And presumably also these presets up here, but I'm not really sure about that. Maybe those are stored in some kind of non-volatile memory. Uh, but uh, that's really a nice feature, if it works. I'm not really sure if this one has got that. It doesn't have a battery otherwise, so I'm assuming that that's what the deal is. Now you can see the serial number. Other things on the bottom. There's the volume control. That's the only control that isn't on the top. Even the snooze button over here is on the top. It also doubles as a, a way to show off the date. The one downside is certainly the fact that I find the alarm is a little bit on the quiet side. It could certainly be worse. Uh, and those modern ones are a lot worse. This one at least is high pitched enough that it'll that'll probably wake you up. Um, I don't really know. I'm a heavy sleeper, so I'd probably sleep right through it. But, uh, there it is. On a lot of these kinds of things, the radio is definitely a better alarm. But the other downside is the speaker. It's not really all that big of a speaker, maybe two inches across, and it doesn't even really sound all that good. Uh, but like I, I've said before, and I'm gonna criticize a couple of these Sony Dream Machines, some of them really sound like crap for what they're supposed to be. Like, I mean, this thing here, it's a lot of bass and not much else. And I don't really like that in a clock radio. I want, you know, full range. I want to hear a little bit of bass and a little bit of treble. I got a couple of clock radios, most notably that one up there, the GE, that are all treble and no bass. This, at least, has got a nice even mix. It doesn't sound too bad. This is one of the only clock radios I own with a digital tuner on it that actually works. One black with or without you, it's U2 Live on Boom 99.7. See, you can tell it's not really all that boomy or anything like that. It sounds like it should. And if you're wondering how to set a preset, you simply press the enter button, and then you select which preset you want to set it for. Just like that. Simple. I've turned out all the lights in here. Turn off the CRT monitor as well. Look at all of that video noise. That's terrible. Well, this is what it looks like in almost complete pitch black. The only thing that's on is my uh, main computer display over there. Well, that'll turn itself off eventually. And uh, you can see that it's not too bright. Unfortunately, the viewing angles are also not that great. I mean, you can see it facing down. That's not really all that bad. But uh, when you go up, it sort of just kind of gets invisible. And this is viewing it straight on. Likewise, same thing from the side. Well, not to the same degree, I guess. Just a couple of uh, little interesting things that I noticed. I do like the fact that it's backlit. It would be a little nice if you could turn that backlight off. Or change the brightness of the backlight, but it's not really the end of the world, so. Let's simulate an alarm in darkness.
Just like that. Get out of bed, whack it, and it's silenced. Even in pitch black. Like if I, like today, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have to get to work for 8.30, which means I gotta get up at 5.30 in order to do that. It's completely dark in here. There is not a single piece of light, except for the light from the various clocks and that thing. So that, that's something really, really handy to have. Of course, it's not really going to replace my set of clock radios that I used to wake me up. Those two there, and then those two here. The one on the bottom, and the one on the bottom there, those are my two primary clock radios for waking me up. The one here is for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and that one's for Tuesday and Thursday. That one up there is a secondary for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and that one's the, the uh, secondary for Tuesday and Thursday, because obviously I go to work at different times. And instead of changing my alarm every night, because I will forget to do that, I've just got a couple of them that are set up. And I need multiple alarms, because I tend to fall back asleep after turning an alarm off, so... don't want to have any more incidents where I'm late for work, because I accidentally turn an alarm off, because that isn't fun. They're also much louder than uh, that Sony, but the Sony is probably certainly nice, and it might become a, a tertiary alarm if I ever decide to add such a thing again. I used to have three for every day, but then I decided that, that was a little bit pointless, so there you go. I think I've waffled on about this clock radio and other various things enough. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.